Welcome, everyone. Today, we'll explore neuroplasticity as a key to addiction therapy. Neuroplasticity, the brain's ability to reorganize itself and form new connections, is a key aspect in addiction therapy. Neuroplasticity allows the brain to recover from the harmful effects of substance use and develop new, healthy behavioral patterns. Neuroplasticity, also called neuronal plasticity, refers to the brain's ability to change structurally and functionally over the course of life. This means that our nerve cells, neurons, and their connections, synapses, can reorganize, strengthen, or degrade depending on experience, learning, or even injury. Simply explained, the brain isn't a rigid organ, but rather a muscle that responds to stimuli. For example, when you learn something new or intensively practice a skill, the relevant neural connections are strengthened. Conversely, unused connections can weaken or disappear. Forms of neuroplasticity, synaptic plasticity, which are changes in the strength of connections between neurons. Structural plasticity, which is the formation of new synapses or even entire neurons, especially in the hippocampus. Functional plasticity, where other brain areas take over functions from damaged regions, e.g., after a stroke. Examples from everyday life, learning a language, where your brain forms new connections for vocabulary, grammar, etc. Playing a musical instrument, where repeated practice strengthens specific neural networks. Rehabilitation after brain damage, where other brain areas often take over the functions of areas that are no longer functioning. Meditation or mindfulness training, proven structural changes in areas responsible for attention and emotion regulation. The concept of neuroplasticity has evolved over many decades, it doesn't originate from a single individual, but is the result of advancing discoveries in brain research. Nevertheless, there are some key figures and milestones. Origins and Development, William James, 1890, Early Idea, the American psychologist and philosopher William James was one of the first to express the idea that the brain is malleable. In his book The Principles of Psychology, he wrote that the brain is not rigid, but adaptable. At the time, however, this idea was not taken seriously by scientists, as it was believed that the brain was immutable after childhood. Santiago Ramón y Cajal, late 19th-early 20th century, the Spanish neuroanatomist, one of the fathers of neuroscience, said something like, in adults, the nervous system is fixed and unchanging. Thus, he still held the erroneous view of the time, but his drawings provided important foundations for later research. Modern Research, Donald Hebb, 1949, the Canadian psychologist and neuroscientist formulated the famous Hebb's Law, neurons that fire together, connect together. This means that when two neurons are active simultaneously, their connection is strengthened, a central tenet of neuroplasticity. His book, The Organization of Behavior, 1949, was a turning point. Michael Merzenich, 1970s 2000s, an American neuroscientist, often referred to as the father of neuroplasticity. He demonstrated through animal and human studies that the brain can be reorganized even in adulthood, for example, in the retraining of sensory perception after injury. Later, he also developed programs to enhance brain performance, e.g., Brain HQ. It wasn't until the 1980s and 1990s that neuroplasticity gained widespread scientific recognition, supported by imaging techniques such as fMRI and PET, which could visualize changes in the brain. Conclusion The idea, already hinted at in the 19th century, William James. The concept, developed in the 1940s, Donald Hebb. The scientific breakthrough, in the 1970s and 1990s, primarily by Michael Merzenich. The importance of neuroplasticity in addiction therapy can be summarized as follows, changes in brain structure, addiction alters brain structure and function, particularly in areas related to reward, motivation, and decision-making. Reversing changes, through neuroplasticity, the brain can partially or completely reverse these changes and build new, healthy neural connections. Learning new behavioral patterns, the brain's ability for neuroplasticity allows us to learn new, healthy behaviors and replace substance use with other activities. Improving treatment outcomes, a better understanding of neuroplasticity can lead to more effective treatment approaches and increase the chances of successful addiction treatment. 
Individualized therapy adaptation, neuroplasticity is an individual process. Therefore, therapy can be adapted to the specific needs and progress of the individual. How neuroplasticity is used in therapy. Cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT CBT helps identify negative thought patterns and behaviors and replace them with positive ones. Exposure therapy, in exposure therapy, those affected are gradually exposed to situational stimuli that trigger addictive thoughts in order to manage them and reduce anxiety. Reward system training, by providing targeted rewards for non-addictive behaviors, the brain can learn to associate positive experiences with activities other than the addictive substance. Medication support, medications can help alleviate withdrawal symptoms and reduce the effects of addictive substances on the brain, supporting the process of neuroplasticity. Exercise and physical activity, regular physical activity promotes neuroplasticity and can help improve mood and reduce stress. In summary, neuroplasticity is a promising approach in addiction therapy. Through targeted interventions, the brain can harness its ability to heal itself to overcome addiction and lead a healthy, fulfilling life. Thank you for your attention.